No company in the entire world makes me pine for my whiteboard quite like AT&T. Trying to keep track of what AT&T is doing in the video space, it's like diagramming the world's longest run on sentence. So, okay, AT&T now runs, just on the video side, DirecTV, Uverse, now Uverse, to be fair, they're not accepting any new subscribers, they are getting phased out. They've got AT&T TV now, that's the one that used to be Direct TV now, in case you're wondering. They've got HBO, HBO Go, HBO Now, and HBO Max, and now AT&T TV. Whew. All right, so that's where we are today. AT&T is now treating AT&T TV as their new flagship. Lots of marketing behind it. So now we've got to decide yet again, is a new AT&T service worth looking at? Will this streaming service finally be the one that sticks? Well, let's dive in. Thanks for joining us today. After this video, go check out the links in the description for more deep dives over at reviews.org. In the meantime, I hope you'll subscribe to this channel because we do our best to be fair and impartial. And if you'll stick with me, I'll show you what I mean. So I had a chance last year to try out the beta version of the box and remote for AT&T TV. They were calling it Osprey back then. That was like a code name, right? And mostly, honestly, I was pretty underwhelmed. But hey, that was a beta and it was just the equipment. AT&T TV's service is all about combining your live TV service and your streaming services into one platform where if press releases are to be believed, they'll all live together in perfect harmony. Now, it's a lot like what Xfinity is doing with their Flex platform. In fact, it's exactly like that. So, how does this one do? Well, it does deliver on its promise, kind of. But let's dig in a little bit deeper and start with what you'll pay for all this. All right, so we've got a basic service that starts at $49.99 a month as just a standalone TV service. You can get it for $39.99 if you bundle it with AT&T's gig internet. Also, that's gonna be $39.99 a month on top of that TV cost. All right, a couple of pricing notes here. First of all, AT&T Fiber, that gig internet connection, the availability for that is gonna be concentrated in California, the Midwest, and the South. Now, the pricing on this is promotional. If you sign up at 50 bucks a month, the second year will be $93. That's nearly double your cost. Now, that tier, that base tier, gets you 155 channels. If you want more, you can go bigger. They've got a few tiers. The highest goes for $70 for the first year and $135 for the year after that. Now, there are some extra costs to consider as well. There's the $19.95 activation fee, a $15 fee per remaining month if you want to cancel early, uh, $10 a month or $120 outright if you need any extra boxes. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. If you want your regional sports network, that's the one I forgot, depending on your package tier, you'll have to pay another $8.50 a month for your regional sports network. That's the thing that keeps you tied to cable in the first place. Now, I'll come back to pricing in just a bit, but speaking of things that kind of tie you to your cable or your satellite package, there is no NFL Sunday ticket on AT&T TV. That's the thing that really keeps a lot of people glued to DirecTV, and it's not available here. Now, on the bright side, you do get 500 hours of DVR service, which is outstanding for a cloud DVR, and you get 40,000 on-demand titles. Not bad. Now, that's the traditional TV part, the thing that looks and smells just like your cable or satellite provider. But what about streaming? Well, it does incorporate popular streaming apps like Netflix, Disney Plus, and YouTube. And this is what the box is all about, right? It's trying to get all of these things into one location so you don't have to switch inputs for different devices. Now, the box is powered by Android TV. That's why it has these apps. It comes with a voice search built into the remote, by the way. That's powered by Android as well. But just because it's on Android doesn't mean you get everything that other Android boxes get. For example, right now at launch, this box is missing Amazon Prime Video, Apple TV Plus, and Hulu. Whew. Now, no doubt getting those is a priority for the company, but still, that's a pretty big loss. All right, so let's put this in real terms. Like I said, I was gonna come back to pricing here. Here's an example of what you would pay over two years, because yes, it is a two-year contract for this, 
For the basic service, that basic tier, let's say you just want to get one box. It's going to cost you, like I said, 50 bucks a month and then $93 a month for the second year of that service. So over two years, that total two year cost, $1,716. Oh, if we go all the way up to their top tier service, again, just keeping it to one box, $70 a month, then $135 for that second year, you're going all the way up to $2,460 over two years for AT&T TV. Now, in any case, whatever package you go for, don't forget the $20 activation fee. And over those two years, if you want to add a box, you want it on more TVs, then if you rent those boxes, that's $240 over those two years, $120 per box if you buy it outright. And if you want those regional sports channels, like I said, over those two years, $204 additional. Now let's compare that to a regular streaming option, something we've had for a while. Let's say you get live TV through YouTube TV. It's not the cheapest option and it's not the most expensive, but it comes out to $1,200 over those two years. That's 50 bucks a month. And the only other cost associated with it is the device you watch it on. So that's maybe 40 or 50 bucks a month for a Roku stick, a Fire Stick, whatever. Now, to be fair, if we follow through with the comparison, YouTube TV gets about 70 channels versus AT&T TV, which gets 155. And 155, yes, is more than 70. But then we run into the classic question, are you really gonna watch all those channels you're paying for? So, who is this even for? Who would choose AT&T TV? If you're already an AT&T Fiber customer, or if you wanna get that sweet, sweet gig internet, and you wanna get a bunch of TV on top of it, then maybe this could be a decent option, especially after they fill the holes in the streaming app offerings. But should a cord cutter be giving AT&T TV a hard look? Well, just because you deliver something over the internet doesn't make it a cord cutting offering. But then, as should be clear by this point, this doesn't really seem to be aimed at cord cutters. It's more about retaining customers and maybe grabbing a few traditionalists as well. AT&T seems to think there's an untapped, or underserved at least, segment of the market that wants the traditional feeling of cable or satellite, but also wants to watch Netflix without changing the TV input. And maybe they're right, but maybe they're not. AT&T lost over 4 million video subscribers last year, and most other traditional providers aren't faring much better. So as customers seem to be running away from that old way of getting their TV, what does AT&T do for their shiny new streaming service? A set-top box, several tiers to choose from, a two-year contract, a second-year price hike. Wait a minute, where have I heard of all this before? Anyway, sound off in the comments below with your opinions. I do want to hear what you think of AT&T TV. Honestly, maybe there's something about it that I missed that makes it more attractive to you than I'm giving it credit for. Just let me know. And again, if you like fair, unbiased reviews, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.